<laughs> just right into it from the previous episode. So I, it's hard not to feel like this won't just be a victory lap, a display of force from Eugene, all these black flashes. Having set the record. Yeah. He's just showing off. <laughs> but, you never know. Might be a special ability, resistant to damage, like, uh, what do you call that in My Hero Academia? No moose. Nope. Damn straight. That's a subversion of what the villains usually say. And Diglett. I feel like we haven't gotten to see her fight enough. Her techniques are just so cool. Oh, damn. Damn! Making that sword look amazing. As if he wasn't cool enough, it's, you know, let's just give him sword abilities too. What does the main body look like? Whoops. She got grabbed. You're a little bit too confident there for a second. <laughs> the confidence though. I'm good. I'll just, I'll be here in this dark portal. Jump in! <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's gonna be the coolest possible outcome. Very Demon Slayer. Whoa. I was saying I wanted more of this, like, these friend adventures. Here it is in full force. <laughs> They're so... They've been down this road before. Just put your faith in each other. This thing looks pretty awesome. Very... Elegant? Oh, he's got the licking thing. Speaking of villain tropes. Stop it. <laughs> They're just like random nothing enemies, but they put a lot into this. <laughs> Damn, it just keeps going. No, no. No, it's a little too easy. I don't know what I wanted, but it wasn't this. Alright, never stop me. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of, un like, weird questions. It's a mystery. Yeah, some of these events were a long time ago. The deaths just started. Was Sukuna the catalyst? Okay, we've seen this thing before, right? This was the, the enemy they fought in one of their first missions when Zakuna met Megumi. But what is it doing here now? I feel like I should have remembered the details more. <laughs> Episode 23, The Origin of Obedience 2. I see. Got it. Right, right. <laughs> Nice. And fight flashback. That's just not, not fair. Whose idea was this? I mean, props for aiming at the top for training. Ooh. Ooh, that's such high praise coming from him. Interesting. There is something holding him back, right? This is very recently. Afraid to swing the bat? <laughs> <laughs> Something great about that. <笑>野球は団体競技。それぞれに役割があるからね。でも呪術師はあくまで個人競技。でも周りに味方が何人いようと死ぬ時は一人だよ。ふう、ダーク。君の奥の手のせいかな。最悪自分が死ねば全て解
actually good enough. I think someone like Megumi who has had experiences living in the world and seen the effects of his actions and suffered what seems to be guilt while simultaneously having an eye for ambition and drive to do great things will be hesitant to put their best foot forward because that sort of make or break for their identity. I think most people believe, at least on some level, no matter how much doubt and security is there, that they are great and they're the, a chosen one of sorts. It's hard not to feel that way since we're all the, the centers of our own universe. And on an optimistic note, I, I actually think that regardless of what people are born with, everyone has the potential to grab that on some level. Partly because I think that zone of like optimal self alignment, let's call it, is going to be very closely connected to one what naturally is. But I think that's something that's hard to actively seek because it's, it's painful, because it involves clashing with reality in full force, actually finding out what that means, you know, what you actually are despite what you want it to mean, which will probably involve letting go of a lot of hopes, you know, letting go of a lot of preconceptions that are sort of in place to give us a sense of identity and a sense of belonging, a sense of purpose, when to find what that actually is would mean being lost for a bit. And not just once, but in many iterations, because it's like a long, probably lifelong process. And the other thing that comes to mind is sort of an old feeling. It's a deep feeling that I think comes from like high school, where I felt like I wasn't good enough, or I I didn't compare with my peers. You know, I have a certain core group of friends that are just really high achieving and excellent. And I understand the appeal of like wanting to fall into a supporting role. I don't think Goju saying a supporting role is bad. To his analogy about bunting, it's a beautiful thing to be in community, but you have to go on your own journey as well. One way of looking at it is that kind of thinking is just another way of delaying what I'm talking about. You know, delaying the difficult self-imposed responsibility of like crafting out what you want and who you are. The great thing about it is that I think you can support more by hashing all those things out and really knowing what you can do. And people love that. You know, as I was talking about me feeling unworthy and wanting to give to my friends and, you know, being sort of a vehicle for their success. I am lucky that they're so great because my success gives them strength as well. I can feel it. Our individual strength is part of what makes the collective strength so powerful. Winning by dying, winning even if you die. Ooh, he hit him with the infinite flick. And he just woke his brain up. <laughs> I would love a Gojo flick. Is that weird? Sounds weird. It is. It's not even really selfishness. Selfishness would be like bringing other people down, you know, like destroying them for your own gain. It's not doing your best. That's a relief. We've lost enough pets in this one season. Did you learn nothing? Oh, oh, is this going to be it? What is it? What is it? Yeah, this is it. This is that, that ability he's been hiding, the ace up his sleeve. Deepest of your shadows, this should be good. Oh boy, we're in for a ride. All of it, huh? Something really beautiful about this. Though his mania is <laughs> a little bit concerning. <laughs> hey. Solid. Oh, always happy to see a domain. Chimera Shadow Garden. <laughs> Great metaphor. <laughs> you know what they say, the perfect enemy of the good. This poor lackey villain just exists for this domain setup. Nice fire, fire arrow. Can you just melt? His imagination is the limit. Pretty broad scope. That seems like it's just a preview. Can't wait till it's fully fleshed out. And we got another finger. Got his attention. It's been a big day, huh? <laughs> well, he's earned it. Yeah, maybe there's something to the like the fear of unleashing his full potential. There's some, something about how much he enjoyed that. The feeling of letting go. See, he is. He really is just sitting on a heap of bullies. He violated my code of ethics. Also, I wanted to beat, beat people up. And the janitor. I'm still not, still don't trust you. Where do you go? The only place to be, no? Oof. Oh, that's the relationship. Interesting. What a way to form a bond. Fight against the Zen and Clan. 
representing clan's popularity just ubiquitous across the lands. Wow, he was literally sold. You don't need tact when you have the infinite. So this is a long, long budding relationship. They do a great job making Gojo's aims and motivations sort of ambiguous. So many of his actions have this feeling of nurturing while also there being another agenda. Not that they're mutually exclusive. And if I have to take a stab at what Gojo actually is, he does care, but he doesn't care more than he has to, if that makes sense. <laughs> because he doesn't have to care about anything. But his personal philosophy, at least at this point, is kind of a tough place to be. If you hate everyone that does things that you think are wrong, and you hate people who are not doing things that are wrong because they are generally forgiving, you don't give the world a whole lot of room. To me, it feels like just a general distrust, which might connect to the fact that he was, you know, sold. But I think a lot of the times the things you distrust about other people are going to largely reflect the things you distrust about yourself. I think one of his gifts and his curses, depending on how it's used, is that he's highly awake to the difficulty of getting it right. It's really hard. You know, kindness is not always kindness. And I don't believe that attributes that are often considered negative are universally negative. It, it depends on the application. But it's very difficult to separate what is sort of scheming on your own part to do the things you're already inclined to do and what is actually sort of a, a higher guideline and where do those two things meet and if you feel frustrated by not being able to determine that then it's going to rub you the wrong way when you see people who, who seem to have figured it out while you're still struggling with it i think that i'm a natural contrarian it's one of the things i've had to rein in or try to rein in mostly unsuccessfully and i really value that skill you know i value that as a tool but i also recognize that it comes from a distrust i think at some crucial point i was let down or felt let down or felt vulnerable maybe when it was exposed that i had been placing a lot of faith in the structures i was given and got burned by that, but also wasn't able to do much better on my own. So you can end up feeling trapped and there's nowhere to really go. You know, if you don't know how to build up, it's a simpler matter of how can you bring things down? How can you bring people to your level, you know, to your moral or intellectual level or whatever? I think there's also something to the idea, and this is maybe just personal, but if you can tear things down, there's a regained sense of control on some level, you know, that at least you can see there's a lot of identity boosts you can get from that. You know, like, I have my eyes open, unlike the rest of the world. When really, even though there probably is something there and there, there's a gift to that, a lot of it probably comes from the feeling of being blind, you know, and not knowing what to do with the things that are in front of you. Not knowing how to match. Seeing the world as unnavigable and difficult, yet wanting things, you know, wanting things greatly. Everything is stupid. Everyone sucks. Throwing milk in the hallway, as we do. He literally overheard the conversation back then. <laughs> I have someone to save. It plays into the whole thing. Whole feeling of powerlessness. So annoying. How annoying. <laughs> How dare she see the good in me. She was looking out for him. Feels great that he probably ended up saving her. Oh no, that's terrible. Well, we have a reason to keep going then. Does that put extra pressure on him to die, Yuji? Where is Yuji? And he just gently hops away. It seems highly inefficient. <laughs> oh, at least he's honest. Oh, no. <laughs> Why is he not brushing his back teeth? Oh, no. It's a smell one. It's a smell curse. A mild punishment. <laughs> That feeling when people notice your your worst insecurities. Here's a weird fruits basket parallel. <laughs> I feel like it's really the smell. It's not as you can get used to, except for you know wrap rice titan and things of that nature. Juju Sampo. He's got a lot of energy all the time. This is a big event. We must get there as fast as possible. <laughs> Does he know? He's probably unaware. Wait a like. Flirt block. What? <laughs> what is the What Juju Sampo was left on the cutting room floor? <laughs> on this poor woman. Is, this, is he making a move on Megumi? He's making a move on Megumi. A lofty goal for any musician. She knew where the station was. She knew where it was all along. <laughs> That's the oldest trick in the book. 
<laughs> I'm on to you, random NPC. But <laughs> judging by that episode, though, I feel like he's a tough person to love. Or he'd be a tough person to be in a relationship with. The world is just so unloving. People are so incapable of expressing love. I hate people who love me. <laughs> How can anyone love in this cruel world? Some people want to be loved, but can't believe the love they receive. But wow. What an amazing episode for Megumi at the end of the season. Like I said, I think the show does such a great job at these one-on-one -on -one interactions between mentor pupil. That scene with Gojo felt so cool and exactly right. And I'm wondering what the effect of that head flick was. Seems like there was definitely some chakra chakra unlocking there. He's a very interesting character. And the more I see of him, the more I relate to him. He's holding out. You know, he's holding out for something that feels right. And he's going to find it. And I think that's why the dynamic between the, the kids works so well is because they all sort of bring a, a different piece of the equation. And I think at the end of the day, the important thing is not so much where anyone is on that spectrum or what the individual beliefs are, but maybe something more fundamental, which is just an ability to adapt, you know, an ability to put things down, re-examine, take in new information and have a, an overarching purpose that makes that sort of pain and suffering worth it. I think part of what Gojo was speaking to in that segment was that even if he might not be fully honest with himself about it, he is someone who wants, you know, he's someone who actually is aiming really high and is ambitious and wants to feel like he has purpose, but has been burned so much and has started so many false paths that there's a little bit of hesitancy there. Nevertheless, that driving purpose is there. And so being with people like Yuji and Gojo as a mentor and owner, perhaps, gives him no choice but to slowly let go a little bit and actually, you know, take a chance at something better.